Hello everyone and welcome to another peel off painting project. Today we're going to be painting a very nice landscape called birch trees. As with all of our peel off painting projects, there are so many different ways in which you be, can be creative. Today I'm going to actually show you two samples of how the birch tree can come out. We're only going to be painting one, but there are literally hundreds of like whatever your imagination and your creativity will allow you. You can take a peel off painting project to very different heights. So let's get started and talk about the supplies that we have. Off camera, I have a cup of paint. The colors that we're gonna be using today are very monochromatic, very simple. Blue, white, and black. In a peel off painting kit, we provide you with the paints, a half peel off sheet, we give you a spatula to remove the peels. We provide you with a plastic apron. We also give you a paper towel, which I like to keep on the side, uh, kind of folded. And we also give you a very, very nice pack of painting brushes of various sizes that you can use in a variety of different ways. Now, as always, please use your own equipment if you like, I have quite a bit of my own few brushes that I'm going to be using here today, as well as let's take a quick look at our 8x10 panel in this particular case that has the peel already attached. Now, just so you know, our peel off kits are now available in a variety of different sizes and a variety of different formats. You can buy 8x10 canvas panels, you can buy 8x10 stretch canvas, you can buy 11x14 stretch canvas, 16x20 stretch canvases, and other canvas sizes we'd like to say are made to order. We also provide box kits, round wood kits, bag kits. We provide all different types. So I would suggest you go to peeloff.com to see some of the items that are available in our really fun and easy to use peel off painting kits. So let's take a look at our project. This is one example of the birch tree. In this instance, it's a full fence with the back trail, two trees, some clouds, and even some snow flurries. This is one example of what you can do with a peel off kit. This is the project we'll be painting today, which is very similar, except it'll just be two birch trees, some distant trees in the background, a blue sky. We have our open gated fence with snow on it and some shadows. I'm also going to add on this one today, maybe some snow flurries just to show you a third option. Me trying to introduce you to peel off painting kits but also to show you that you can paint them in a variety of different ways. So here's our canvas. It's an eight by 10 canvas. And what I've done is I've blocked off just a couple of birch trees for you. We're gonna create the entire background and then we're gonna come forward. So let's get started. First thing I'd like to do is take my flat brush and I'm gonna paint the sky. The sky is blue, so I'm just going to put a little bit of blue paint on my can, on my on my brush, and just begin to stroke in some of that nice, rich blue sky. Now you can use any brushes that you want to for this. It's a flat brush situation, so you just want it so you can have a lot of spread. And if you bear with me for one second, I want to try to get a slightly larger one. See, slightly larger just to add a little quickness in and putting in this background. I don't want to take a lot of time holding you up to show you how to paint by using tools that would take way too long to put in this nice rich sky. So you see it's just a blue sky and all I'm doing is adding the blue, keeping it nice and thin, making sure I paint over the peel and I'm coming down low enough so that later I can add what I'm going to call some distant trees that will be black and then we'll work from there. This is a fun project. This is an easy project. It's an, I call it an introduction to landscaping. 
Landscapes can sometimes be very intimidating with all of the different foliage and the different things that are required. But I'm going to show you through this peel off project just how fun, quick and easy it can be. Almost blocked in. Now what you've seen me do here is about a third of the way on the canvas I've painted the blue. Leaving this down here alone because that's where other colors are going to come in. But what I'm going to show you is something else. In the foreground, you have snow. Back here are going to be some trees, dark black trees. But what I'm going to take is put some white on my brush. I didn't clean it. And I'm going to come right down here and start dragging in some of that light, icy feel. Now, why am I doing that? A couple of reasons. One, it establishes my foreground. Gives me an idea of where my ground is. This right here is going to be where my dark trees are. But also what this does is this gives me what I call a layered underpainting. So that when I come back later and add my snow, I can leave a trail or even create a trail a lot easier because I've already established a color tone that's icy underneath. So I'm just going to literally take this left and right stroke with a little bit of white and a touch of blue. And I'm just going to keep painting and blocking in this entire ground all the way down to the bottom. And again, it doesn't really matter. It's just some color that I'm looking for, but I don't want it to be as dark as the sky. So hence I put in the white. And even as you see me applying more, what I'll do is lighten up any dark blue that tries to stay there so I can get a lighter color underneath. Right now it doesn't make sense but I have to describe what I'm doing for you so you know. That's what I do, step by step. The whole understanding of it will reveal itself as we continue. So for right now, just go with the process. As I always like to say to people, you don't have to trust me, but let's at least trust in the process, step by step, and let it reveal itself. If it'll make sense, later even if it doesn't make sense now. So I'm scratching it. You can hear that sound, I'm scrubbing it. So I'm trying not to leave big globs of paint which takes too long to dry and I don't really need that heavy impasto right now. I'm not even worried about what I call the open divots, the scratches. I'm just trying to block in as much as I can so we can get to the next phase of this operation. It's not a long video but you can take it to whatever extremes you want. You can spend hours, literally days on this project if you desire, adding all kinds of wonderful, exciting, what I call pushing around a few colors and being creative. So we almost have this blocked in. See, we almost there. All right, just in a few moments, there. That's good enough for me. Now I'm gonna clean off my brush. Even though I'm about to use some black, I'm still gonna clean off my brush. I stir it in my cup. I smack it from side to side. I call that ring the bell. I'm gonna wipe my brush on my paper towel. You see, I don't crumple it, I just wipe it. And then what I'm gonna do is pound it slightly Pick up a little bit of black and I'm going to start making my tree line, which is going to cover most of this white and a little bit of this blue. Now, here's where the top parts mean more than the bottom. So as you're tapping, I like to call this the stock market, where you're going a little up and a little down. Because all you're looking for is some tops that resemble some distant trees. So by tapping the brush slightly, it opens up the bristles, allowing you to turn and twist the brush just enough to give that look that there's some kind of tree shape 
way, way back in the distance. So that's what we're doing now. We're just adding our tree line. Now, once I have the top the way that I want it, the rest of this is just blocking in. So now I'm just going to very quickly tap, filling in all the way down to the bottom, this tree line. Now, this just has a little bit of a character to it. It shows something else going on in the painting. It gives some distance once we start painting more towards the foreground. And it also helps block in the tree line or block in the shape for our birch trees with the tree line so that later it'll stand up even more when we remove the peel. So now I'm coming down to the bottom. And if you notice, I didn't go there first. I'm slowly making my way down there because once I get closer to the edge, I don't want to go too crazy down here. I just want to block in the edges because I'm going to be adding some white snow caps that maybe some of the hedges has received. But I'm trying to keep my horizon line straight. So as I get to the bottom, I tap a little slower, walking along that edge that I made, see? Letting some of it, you know, spin out a little bit, that's fine. But I'm not going too crazy as I did in the top. So now once I block in all of this, I have my distant tree line, see? Quick, simple, easy, to the point. Now this is done. So now that I have my tree line, my trees, I'm going to clean off my brush once again, stir it, smack it from side to side. Because it's black, I may go a few extra times. And then I'm just going to wipe off the brush again. Now, I remembered I used another brush earlier, so let me clean this one off, which is a very good idea to always keep your tools and equipment clean and ready just in case you need it. Okay, so now I'm going to put that down and I'm going to pick up this cute little flat brush here. Now with this brush, even though the paint is somewhat white, I'm going to start introducing some color back here. So I'm going to take the brush, tap it into the white. You could have some blue on it, I don't care. And very lightly towards the bottom, I'm just going to tap in some hedges some shapes that are going to represent hedges. Basically the same stock market approach I use on the tree line, except I'm going to purposely make it nice and small so that they just represent some hedges in the front of that particular mound of trees that may be a little bit closer visually and they show some of the snow that has covered them. And because of the black, I'll tap more into the white and just keep going along until I get to the other side. And that represents those hedges. You see that? See how cool that is? Now I'm going to just wipe off the brush slightly. And now I'm going to begin to bring in some snow banks. So the first thing I'm going to do, and you could use this, you could use this flat brush, this brush, any of the two brushes that I used previously. But for right now, I'm going to continue with this brush. Because going on one side, I'm just going to start to drag along the edges some distant snow. Now, what I'm doing while I'm dragging is I'm looking to see where does my trail begin? That trail that goes from my fence line all the way back. Now, it doesn't have to be permanent yet. I could always come back and reintroduce it. But I'm going to try for purposes of this video to show you how you could create little shapes that look like mounds of snow that are trailing in and creating the trail for you. So here I go. I'm just going to purposely angle a little bit. And I'm going to say that perhaps my trail is going to come down here in Neander. So I'm going to bring some snow into that area by lightly dragging the brush, leaving some blue spots because there's some nice icy spots. But remember, a trail in dimension has to be smaller in the distance and wider as it approaches you. 
So this is what I'm trying to establish now is that narrow little opening that would be back there to start my trail so that as it comes forward, it begins to widen. This is the importance of all of these strokes now are to create the look that there's a lot of snow banks and a trail that's coming around, that's coming down. I could twist and turn it as I change the amount of snow that's actually in the open trail. But if you notice, you're now looking at a trail that's going backwards, that's coming forward. Now my fence line will be here. So since I'm aware of that, I'm gonna start a little bit of a curvature because I just wanna make it interesting. So now I'm just gonna pull some paint right in this little area here, see? And then I'm gonna leave that so I can wind my trail just a little bit. So now when I come over here, I'll maybe bring the snow a little bit to the trail that way and then let it curve wider as it turns this way. This is how I'm gonna establish where my fence opening is. See, so now these little mounds of snow are helping not only to create a trail, but they're giving me the snow that has fallen in a path that has been walked on by either man or animals to create that trail. Now we can go back and tighten this up any way that we want to. I say let's have some more fun. So I'm gonna clean off my flat brush. You hear me ringing the bell. I'm gonna pick up a pointed round brush and I'm gonna put a little water on it, touch it to my paper towel, twist it in some of this white, the thin part, not really thick part, because somewhere back in here, I wanna start pulling in some little lines that are gonna look like some trees that are inside this mass of black that are very faint. So I'm not looking for them to be really strong in detail or shape other than the fact that you see a line and some branch work. Heck, even some of them can just be, just be lines. And I'm changing the variation so that some look closer, some look further. And this just adds, again, a touch of interest to the background, just a touch. So I'm just gonna very quickly stroke in some lines, making a few little twigs with them just to give some interest inside that darkness so that it's not just completely one black mass. And it doesn't have to represent anything more than the look of some distant foliage. See, that's good enough. That's actually good enough for me. And then maybe even I'll take the flat brush and a touch of white, like a faint little touch, smash it on the paper, um, the, the plastic, the pilot, and just very lightly go inside here and make like indications that perhaps inside here are some foliage dots that are on some of these trees in the distance. So now I have the black and I have a few specks of, of foliage that are white where they might be a little closer and then I also have some tree shapes and it just gives that background just a slightly different look. And then maybe even back in here, I'll tap just along the lower edge above what we did earlier, just to give that some substance. So you see now we have the trees, we have the sky, we have the tree line, we have the snow line, and we have our snow in the beginning of our trail. Not bad, huh? Now we're gonna put in a fence line. I still see where my birch is and I definitely see where my opening is. So let's start there. I'm gonna twist in the pointed brush. I'm gonna come right here in the front and say that there's a pole that sits right here in the ground. That's part of our fence line at its opening right there. And then maybe over here on the other side, I'll establish the full opening of that fence. So now I have my two poles that represent the opening that leads onto my trail. 
Now I'm going to put some railings. For railings, you could put two, three, whatever you like. You could leave a little top part exposed and open, but I'm just going to run a line right along the top here to represent the top of my fence line. You see that? All the way to the edge. Then I'm going to come and maybe go right in the middle and I'll establish one more. Now you could stop here with these two and you could be okay with that. I'm going to go for a third. I'm going to go for a third. And I'm going to show you a trick. If you find that your third is going to be too tight, then pull your legs down a little bit. It's okay. It's your fence. Then add your third. You're the creator. You have to look at things and change things. And don't worry. I'll show you how to fix that part that's going to be the bottom of those trees in a moment. Now I'm going to flip to the other side, bringing my legs down just a little bit here and try to stay even. I'm just going to make another fence line that runs here and another one that runs here and another one that runs at the bottom. And now I've established my fence line. And we're going to come back to that. I want that black to dry a little bit. So now I'm going to take, and before I even peel up my tree, I'm going to take some blue and some white to make a nice icy shadow. And right at the feet here, I'm just going to draw an angled line that's going to represent a shadow of this tree. And on the same angle, I'm going to establish the next shadow with the same coloration that runs this way. So now I've established the shadow and we'll come back and fix all of this up once we've established our birch trees and we're almost done. But not bad, huh? Told you. Easy. Let's just soften this blue one up a little bit. Soften it. Just make it a little bit lighter. That's fine. All right. So now... I know some of you are saying, well, what about the snow? Well, let's put some snow. Let's take our brush, put a lot of paint on it, and right along the top edge of that fence, just carefully walk right across the, the birch trees, a fence line, I mean a snow bank, that rests right at the very, very top. And we're going to take our time, and we're going to do all three fences. And this way, when we peel away, our birch trees are going to push this fence back just a little. And then we're going to start painting it. See? Not bad, right? And even though I have a little bit of a cap here, I'm going to add just a little touch of paint right along the top. Just for authenticity. And then over here, I'm going to do the same thing by establishing a paint line right along the rails again. How cool is that? See? Good enough. Looking good so far? And maybe even right at the feet where the wind has blown, there's a little snow that kind of rests right at the very bottoms. Now, I'm going to bring my trees down a little bit when I paint them and redo my shadows. So I want it to extend just a little bit past my fence. But don't you worry about that. I'll show you how to make that happen with the greatest of ease. Cleaned off my equipment. Putting it to the side in case I need it later. Now to pick up my spatula and remove my... Birch tree. So now we have the two trees. You can stick this anywhere, as I always say. Anywhere that you can get something to start to peel up. Because once you get it to peel up, you just peel away. That's going to be tree number one. And over here is going to be tree number two. In this case, I didn't even have to use the spatula can go right to the top and just grab an edge and bam now my birch trees always start out black always 
So even though this is black, when I pull the black through and pull this down just a little bit more to create the trees in the front of the fence line, I'll know where they are. So I'm going to take this little flat brush. You could take a pointed brush. You could take your big brush. And I'm just going to run some color right down the middle, right down here, right down this tree shape. See, I'm just going to drag, load, and drag, and load, and drag, and load. And I'm just going to keep doing this process nice and slow, keeping my edges to establish where my birch trees are going to be. And remember, I want to pull a little extra so that it comes out in front of my fence line like that. And I'll reestablish the shot. I'm not worried about that. Now to do the opposite side. See, I'm just blocking in that white that I made because now I know where it is. Now, of course, you can add a tree here as we did in the other picture. You could add trees back there before you even peel. You could put a barn back there. You could put a farmer back there. You could put animals back there. You spend the time that you want on your creativity. And don't let anybody make you think there's only one way to be creative because there isn't. And that's the whole purpose of peel off. It's just to help you block in certain shapes while you just go ahead and have some fun. And then you could always come back to those shapes and then do with them what you see fit. Now, to answer the question, I know a few of you are asking, well, why is he painting his birch trees black if they're white with black in it? Because I just like to have the black be my foundation. So when I come back and add the white to it, it gives the tree a much better look. But again, you're the artist for you. You do what you feel is good for you. Okay. So this is good for at least right now, reestablishing the shadows later. I've given myself two nice size birch trees. I'm going to clean off my brush. I'm going to give that a few seconds to dry before I come in and go back over that and completely black tree with white. So while we're doing that, why don't we just take a look, quick look at the other two paintings and let's just see where we are. Just so we can give this a chance to dry. So the one we're doing now, we've established the trees in the back, some foliage here, our fence line with the snow on it. We put snow banks here. We painted our birches white and we have our trail. On the previous one that I showed you as another example of how you can do it, there was a cloud added along the ridge line before this came in with more straight and misty with a trail and a tree was added and some snow was falling. Shadows here. But again, you can be as creative as you want to be. That's the beauty of this whole process is while you're not limited to one thing, with peel off, you're actually able to create many things. So don't let peel off just be as I'm doing it. You do it too. Find your way through. So now we're going to make this a little bit grayer by going in with some white. Putting white on the brush. And now I'm just going to drag right down this black. Yes, right down the black. I'm just going to drag the brush. See, right down to black, adding more. Going right back in, dragging it right down. See, and you see some of that black stuff that's in between? Oh, do I love that. Oh, do I love this. It adds like some automatic texture. And this is the dividends that's getting paid to me for painting it black first and then establishing the white. Is that I get that coloration right there. See the difference between those two is not completely white. It's definitely not gray, but it, I love it. It just gives me an added extra bonus. And you can't just make that up. It just happens, you know, and you just got to let it happen. So you got to let the streaks 
do their thing. Just got to let it go. This is the best thing you could do when you're doing this, this part like this is to not try to control it, but allow it to just happen. And then make it work for you or add for you some extra look, texture, and elements. Now, of course, you can clean up some of these jagged brush lines, but very lightly, just, just pulling in a direction to reestablish that. But to me, these extra lines, that extra color is priceless. And before I go in and start putting the black back that would be representative of a birch tree, I'm going to take my pointed script liner brush, round brush, and start making some white limbs. Now everyone gets all bent out of shape over limbs, and limbs to me are just a necess they're necessary. It's, it's something that you just have to learn. I touch a little water on my brush, I twist my brush or turn it into the white, and then I just start making wise. I grab the brush, I make a first line that's kind of wiggly like that, and then I come right off of it and I make a Y. That's a Y to me. Now from that Y on any of these limbs, I can make another Y and another Y. And this is where you can build these limbs to any level you want. And I always like to overlap so it looks natural. See? So I overlap the branches and I stay on one side before I start going to the other. As I rise up, I keep my Ys raised up like hands going up to the sky. And even at the top, I just let it roll right off. And then I come on the other side and go back down, establishing different lines and positioning the next branch in a slightly different different location so they're not all soldiers lined up next to one another see this line is here so i'll go purposely below it and raise up and put maybe three or four on that limb so that neither one of the other side limbs are exactly the same maybe i'll start this one down here go over all of this stuff in the background and do that now that's one now I have to do the other limb. And what's going to happen? Automatically, I'm going to go over some of the other branches, but that's fine. It may take out some of the things that I did, but it adds to the beauty of the foliage and of the trees by providing the look of natural overlap. Because there is no tree that's not going to overlap its branches. Heck, look at this one. I made this one into a whole twig. But that's okay because it keeps your mind off of this. See? So by just having fun and not restricting yourself and not worrying about what you feel you're messing up or covering up, you have the opportunity to be as creative as you need to be. There's nothing blocking any of these on this side. So on this side, I could go a little extra. Your eye goes here, but it doesn't stay there because there's too much going on. And that's what you want. And it's not orderly and neat. So you're not looking at it that way. Now that I've established those tree limbs, I think I want to add like one more on this side that maybe comes this low, but branches out this way just to take you back to the trail. Like that. See? Now I'm going to clean off my brush. I'm going to pick up, pick up a little bit of black, and I'm going to put some knots in the tree. At least that's what I'm going to call them. So now I'm going to take the black and go from left to right. I'm going to make a line over here. Maybe there's a line over here. This establishes the birch tree pattern. So now I'm like laddering up one over here, one over here, one over here. Almost like I'm making spaces for you to climb up the tree if you were going to be walking in it like a ladder. So that there's a footstep here, there's a footstep here, there's one here, but I'm staying on the main bark of the tree. Not the leaves, not the limbs rather. Put a little black on me here, let me take this off. Put my pinky down and just keep making these little tiny lines going up, up, up. And I'm establishing at least the look 
of a birch tree. More detailed birches absolutely are available and you can go for them. And this is where I, what I mean when I say you can spend days, weeks, months on a painting. You're never finished till you say you're finished. You want to get some sample looks of a birch tree and then start to mimic every little pattern that you see? I say go for it. It'll help you learn to see and it'll make your painting stand out amazingly. This one is just a fun, easy, quick way for anybody who feels that they would like to be creative, not sure that they can be creative. This is why peel off was invented to help anyone who wants to push around a few colors and be creative do so. We provide step-by-step -step instructions. This YouTube video is a source. If you wanted to, you could contact me and maybe become part of my Zoom classes. So there's the finished painting. But I want to add just a couple of more limbs to this one. I like this one. This one is really interesting to me. So I just want to shoot one more over there and maybe... From this one, I want to shoot another one over here. And this is where I'm just going in and putting some elements that I just see and that I just want. Good enough. So now let's go back to my shadow. What do we make it with? A little blue, a little white. Get it nice and light. And then just come right underneath here and pull me a shadow here. And establish me a shadow here. And then maybe take a little white and put a little snow in between here. And maybe at the feet, we'll just mound some snow that drifted and landed right at the base of both of these birch trees. See? And then maybe even in the front of this fence, since it's so close, we're just going to establish a little bit of a slightly higher bank of snow that sits off on both edges. We could even go back up in here and reestablish a few. It's our painting. It's your time. Just have fun. And there you go. Our painting is completed. Well, as always, I hope you had fun. This was really fun. This was really easy. Slightly long video, but not bad. And just because I can, before I leave, I'm going to make it snow. I'm going to take this bristle brush, hog hair bristle brush, put some water on it, go right into this white, make it nice and juicy, like that, and now I'm going to take and fling with my finger snow. Woo, look at that. And now I'm going to make it snow on this particular piece. Now it's no snow on the other ones, it's no snow on the box sample. But I'm adding snow to show you how even in the middle of painting, you can make changes that aren't necessarily given to you and make your painting even have a better look. So there's my snow falling all over my painting, adding another value to it, taking a little extra time to show you this. Oh, I love snow. Look at that. Look at the more snow, the better, if you ask me. The more snow, the better. So tell me that doesn't look interesting. But again, thank you for joining me. I hope you had fun. I look forward to you painting with me the next time. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can be alerted to all the new postings that we're going to do. Peel Off J. Robinson Art is expanding. Get on board. Tell your friends. These are great gifts. These are great things to use in a class setting. These are great things to use anywhere. You can have fun on girls' night out, boys' night out, football day, whatever. Look at some of the projects that we have. I'm sure you'll find something that you like. So until next time, take care of everyone. And remember, always think about having fun, pushing around a few colors, and being creative with peel-off. Till next time. Bye-bye.